Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be taking a look at both the video folder, since there's only a couple in there, and the other folder to wrap up our filters. So the video folder is meant for working with video frames, issues that might happen when you're taking video rather than photo, such as interlacing footage or deinterlacing footage. So in this example, we have this still frame from a video, and interlaced footage is just a style of compressing footage so that you have these two different progressive scans laced together and so sometimes if you catch a frame from it it'll look split like this and deinterlace is a filter that's meant to deinterlace those lines together so you can choose to eliminate the odd or even lines and interpolate them together or duplicate but if i just press ok at the standard setting you see that we've deinterlaced the footage back into like one compressed original frame that it was. So this can be helpful when you're working with frames from video, from interlaced footage specifically, which might not be all too common. The other thing we have is, let's say I'm working with an image that has a certain amount of saturation in some colors, especially maybe reds. If we go to filter, video, NTSC colors, this will just try to limit certain color ranges so that if this was to be displayed in a broadcast situation, no colors would bleed over certain TV standards and, and lines. And I have the histogram open. If I was to go to filter, video, NTSC colors, we see that it is trying to limit some colors now that we oversaturate everything that might bleed in a broadcast situation. So again, a very niche one. Finally, we have the other section, which has a good bit of useful filters in them. So first off, we have custom. This is an interesting one. It's similar to the convolution kernels in your video editing softwares like Premiere Pro. It basically gives you this matrix of boxes and using a mathematical operation similar to convolution, you can input different numbers in these boxes and you can get brightening, darkening, additive or subtractive effects or sharpening and blurring effects based on the kind of multiplication and mathematical operation that it sends each pixel through. You can see here, we're kind of getting like an edge sharpening effect. If I do like a negative 20, for example, now we're getting this really darkening effect, but 20 on the other corner brings it back out for this weird, super sharp look. So you can try to get a feel for how this one works rather than the math about it and play around and see if you can create a custom filter that's useful for you. And you can even save and load your custom matrices that you create if you happen to fine tune something specific that you like. The next effect we have is high pass. This is kind of similar to emboss in that it will work around the edges and then fill everything else with a pretty solid 50% gray. However, it's like the opposite of a Gaussian blur. It's creating a separation around the edge, which we might not want to just leave like this, but we can later use this information to apply back onto our original image or work from here. For example, if we made sure this was a smart layer or smart object and we applied that high pass filter and got a little bit of haloing around those edges for contrast and then set that high pass filter to a blending mode of overlay or soft light. What we now get is a sharpening effect along the edges. And you can see before and after, especially on these strands of hair, we get a pretty strong sharpening effect. Another cool example of how you might want to use this is if I just leave it at normal and create a decent haloing effect around the edges, and then apply something like a threshold adjustment. This could be a cool way to get a line drawing or just like the outline of an image, like so. You can get cool line outlines because this wouldn't be necessarily possible if the high pass filter wasn't around. Then you'd get into more like cut out and pop out territory, or which could also be cool, but you see how the high pass filter gives us just the edge line. The next filter we have is HSB slash HSL and these stand for hue, saturation, and lightness and brightness. And this basically allows us to take one input such as red, green, blue, 
and shift it to something else like hue, saturation, lightness. And if you watch the histogram, you'll see it kind of just shifts over the entire histogram in the other color channels. So you can get crazy effects like this where it's taking the red, green, blue values and just shifting and mapping them over to be the other channel values. You can try doing inputting from one to the other in different ways. And you can see you get, this is actually pretty cool. We got like a cool color shift. So you. I can imagine there might be functional reasons why you might want to shift color channels or abstract distorting reasons like this. Another cool one we have is maximum and minimum. So these are kind of like opposites of each other. Maximum will kind of blur and push out the brighter colors, the more maximal colors, and you'll see it pushes into the silhouette. So this can be good if you're trying to shrink down perhaps a green screen or a silhouette of some sort. It also gives us this lens blur type of effect that happens. And you can change it from roundness to squareness, but you see it's pushing in the shape. So beyond just like a blurring effect, we can use it to push the edges and boundaries of certain masks or screens. And the opposite of that would be the minimum effect, which will push the darker colors and expand out the darker colors. So in this case, if I wanted to make the silhouette just a little bit thicker, I can use this effect and either choose squareness or roundness. But in this way, I'm pushing the silhouette out further and further and expanding out this. So it can be good, again, for silhouettes, shapes, or green screens and mats. And lastly, we have offset. This could almost might as well be in the distort folder, but offset will take the entire canvas or frame, and you can shift it over horizontally or vertically. Basically, it's the same as the type of offset effect you'll see in Premiere Pro or After Effects. You can also change the undefined areas to repeating edge pixels like this, or maybe like a pixel stretch idea, or setting just to a background, your current background color, which mine is set to the default black and white. But that wraps up a brief introduction to the video and other folders. If you're missing it, I've covered every single effect folder episode by episode in the playlist on my channel. So you can check that out, including the filter galleries and liquify tools. If you're new to my channel, definitely subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos and check out a bunch more of my photo and video editing tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Justin Odisho and I'll see you in the next video.